Fantastic Nation and all my lovely friends. Well, I'm so glad you could join me. Now, before we begin this episode, I just want to let you know that my membership site, The Artastic Collective, is currently open for enrollment. Now, the enrollment period is time sensitive. You see, it's only going to be open for another couple weeks, and then you won't have an opportunity to join in on this fabulous deal until the next time it launches. That is a long way away for getting your hands on a sweet art teaching resource deal. To better support our teachers, I created the Artastic Collective. With the Artastic Collective Art Resource Library membership for art teachers, my mission is to provide you with prepared art lessons, resources, and activities that will allow you to free up your time and live your life, whether that means traveling, pursuing your hobbies, or spending time with your family. It will provide you with fully planned art lessons and resources that cover standards and include assessments and rubrics, and these will be given to you monthly. You should be able to be an instructor or a teacher and be able to have the time to live life. With this membership, you will receive teaching ideas, inspiration, and guidance to help you navigate and problem solve in your classroom or studio. This membership will give you the freedom to create art with kids, live your life, and will help you engage your students with art lessons. This membership is intended for elementary and middle school teachers. Find my membership at artasticcollective.com or you can simply search it in Google or your favorite web browser. Remember, the membership is only open for enrollment for a couple weeks and then it will close until the next time it launches. So make sure you visit the site right now and join this opportunity for getting your hands on hundreds of misertastic art resources before this opportunity is gone. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Well, my lovely friends, in case you don't know or are just joining me for the first time, I am Kathleen McGivern and I am both the founder and creator of all things Miss Artastic. I am a one-woman show that creates everything from the art lessons and resources, my own website, including MsArtastic.com, which is my blog, the Artastic Collective, which you just learned about, which is my membership site where you receive bundles of fully prepped art lessons each month that you can use immediately in your classroom. I also have resources available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic, and you can find it by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT. I also run this podcast and have a YouTube channel which produces new episodes each week. I am dedicated to you, Artastic Nation. I want to ensure that I can help you be productive, efficient, and fully planned, which will hopefully alleviate some of that art teaching stress as I help you plan your year. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about what to do with those fast finishing students. Now, there are two reasons kids finish fast. First, they finish fast because they are focused and are on task and don't spend time getting distracted or procrastinating, which of course, you know, I mean, I do that all the time myself. But the second reason is that they just rushed through the work. If you suspect some rushing, kindly ask the student to either add more detail to their work or slow down and take their time to do their best or ask them to put it on the whiteboard with a magnet and stand back to look at the work to see if they themselves can find any areas to improve on or use your own strategies. Either way, you're going to always have students finish before the rest. So let's take a look at some ideas or routines that you can build into your classroom so that students know what to do when they're done so they don't have to ask you and so that you don't have to instruct them on what to do every time. Now, before I tell you suggestions or my ideas, Please know that if you spend time at the beginning of the year or semester or section of your classes, 
building these finishers as a routine, usually by the third month, your kids will all most likely do it on their own. Maybe not if you have an exceptionally challenging class this year, um, but recently I've had a very challenging year, and while most students were happy to follow the directions or routines, others did not. What I'm saying is, I get it. I know that not everything will work out the way we hope it will or expect it to. It's always easier said than done in some circumstances. So before I tell you this, with a typical class, hopefully by third month, it could be running very well. Um, but I know that things are, again, always easier said than done. And every classroom is very dynamic and different. So build routines. I always keep the same pattern in every lesson. We enter, we do a soft start until we're ready to begin the lesson, usually five to 10 minutes of choice draw or free art exploration or coloring, silently with music and dim lights. Once they're calm and have transitioned their minds to art making, then I do a lesson and then they do the work. After the work, students always do my when you're done activity. I do centers in older grades. I have bins with pre-prepared activities that students can choose from to do when they're done. Now, I know that centers in primary is a social and play thing, but I've pulled that lovely concept up also into the older grades too. On my whiteboard, I have labels that state first, then, next, after, which of course is a visual schedule. As I generally have lots of needs in my classroom, I decided to use that concept for all students so that directions are clear to everyone and students can revisit the steps at any time should they need to. This also stops kids asking me what they should do next or what to do when they're done. It is always visible under the first, then, next, after labels. I write small, in section, I write small instructions with my whiteboard markers such as ceramic, ceramics pinch pot lessons, then get clay, next make pinch pot and set it to dry with a name and label your class um, after art centers or you could put something like sketchbook assignment when done. I teach kids how to reference these instructions and I point to them as I tell the kids what they are so they remember where to look when they forget a step. I do this every time. When I first introduce the when you're done activities or fast finisher work, I always teach the expectations of how to use it for a few weeks and I make sure I reinforce and reinforce what it will look like. The volume they should work at, uh, while they and their friends are focusing on their work, those kinds of things. Once this has gone on for a while, you should start noticing the routine happening a bit more automatically. As I said, usually around the end of the second month or in the third month. Well, my friends, let's get to the good part. So if you started multitasking, make sure you come back to me. Let's look at those fast finisher ideas. Okay. So for grades five and under, I have a binder of directed drawing sheets that they can try and copy into their drawings um, or into their sketchbooks that will help them further, further build their confidence and find motor skills. I keep the binder as my own master copy and then I print them out as I need them and put one or two at a time in a basket that is labeled directed drawing. I have made directed drawing resources for all the seasons and holidays and these are available in my TPT store. You can even get the year long bundle of my directed drawings so that you are set for the entire year. You can print out all the drawing steps and keep them in a binder as your own master copies. So when you are ready to, um, you can pull one out for the specific season or holiday, photocopy them and then keep them all ready in a bin. Perhaps you have a directed drawing bin or you can keep it in your when you're done area. This way you are ready to go, worry free, fully prepped. Drawing prompts. So another thing you can have is 
drawing prompts available to your students. So you can have a container of some unusual, not your average drawing prompts. These are also called task cards. Kids can pull out drawing prompts or a task card and they can use it as an idea for what to draw. I like to photocopy my cards onto bright paper and laminate them for long time use and once only prep. I'm not a fan of doing things twice. So for things like this, I will usually laminate. It will be a bit more work up front, but it is oh so worth it. Kids can go to where you keep your drawing or sketchbook prompts and can pick one and then, depending on your preference, complete them in their sketchbooks, duotains, or on blank paper. If you're looking for pre-made fun and engaging sketchbook prompts, I have created I have some created and they're available in my TPT store or with your Artastic Collective membership. Find them under sketchbook category in both of those places. Another thing you can do is mini art challenges. So you can create some mini art challenges um, or task cards and they can take should take approximately two classes to finish. So they don't want to be projects, but they want to be explorations. You can have them laminated and they can describe challenges that give a target and mediums they need to use in the art piece. Each challenge could be different and present the students with a problem to solve or will force them to experiment with other mediums. They should really be mini explorations. Something like using crayons, newspaper, bubble wrap, and oil pastel create a collage that explores blah blah blah. Or use cardboard and tinfoil to create a miniature sculpture inspired by the works of Donald Judd. You can easily integrate multiple art types and art history into this. To add more fun and mystery, you can also hide them around the room. I often like to do this to my kids. I like to hide their work. <laughs> so for added movement break built into the day, um, you can move, hide them around the room uh, or put them in envelopes and number them in order so they have to go through each one until they get to the very end. So it has to be sequential. And you can also hide those two if you want. So if they find envelope number three, but they're looking for envelope number two, too bad, go find number envelope, envelope number two. And that will also be very productive for when you're done. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like to uh, hide those um, or you don't have to, you can just put them in a little basket and then label them in order. So they have to go through each one and then when they get to the very end, you can even offer them a small prize. So that will encourage kids to want to do it, right? So there's a little incentive or something fun, right? So a prize doesn't actually have to be something physical that you go and purchase. You can make other prizes like make art upside down under a table for the day or sit on the special chair. So you can have like a sweet chair, like a bean bag or something like that. And the kid can sit there with a clipboard for the entire class and they can pick the day they want. Um, so that kind of thing. Sketchbook assignments. You can always put um, your sketchbook assignments as your assignments between projects. So this is especially good for an older grade, um, either upper elementary, middle, or high. One of the most meaningful activities that I can bring into a classroom is the sketchbook. Sketchbooks are one of those things that can be extremely, mean, extremely meaningful for students or if not structured with rules and expectations can discourage students or become neglected. Sketchbooks should be a source of creativity and joy for students. They should engage them on a deep level and provide them space um, to discover who they are. Allow them to take risks, experiment, experiment with a range of mediums and materials, and explore their identity. It is important to provide your students with engaging sketchbook assignments that they can connect to and through it discover their identity and passions in life. Sketchbooks can make or break your art classroom depending on how you implement them. If you are able to set a time and routine for working on your sketchbook assignments, 
Um, set up expectations of experimentation and quality by using examples of completed sketchbook prompts and have a unit plan with an aim of what you will cover and you should be able to implement your sketchbooks in your classroom in a meaningful way while covering areas or many areas of the curriculum. You can create your own sketchbook prompts with examples or to save you time so students can see the expectations themselves and get started on their own. Um, so for a quick time saver, you can get one of my completely planned sketchbook units that have both a full page example for each prompt and a smaller glue in one that you can cut up um, and then they can glue those smaller prompts that have both a written prompt and a little miniature thumbnail of the example. And these can be glued into their sketchbooks, either at the top or bottom of the page or on the back of the previous page. And then they can draw the new one on the right side. Now, these, these units also have um, rules and expectations all built into the sketchbook unit for kids to glue into their sketchbooks. It has um, introductory worksheets for it's an interactive section and then it goes into all of the prompts. So there are co very complete units that you can easily just grab and then implement without doing any planning on your part. I have saved you that time. So I have created fully planned sketchbook resources for elementary, middle, and high school levels with prompts that are unique and encourage creativity and experimentation and best of all, engage the students. Find these in my TPT store, Ms. Artastic, so that's Teachers Pay Teachers, or you can find it with your Artastic Collective Membership in the sketchbook categories, okay? So the next thing is that students could design their own smaller art piece based on the concepts. So the next idea is that they create their own smaller artwork based on the concepts and mediums that they just learned in the previous project. For example, if they learned how to make pinch pots and they finish fast, they can design their own version of a pinch pot with more ex student exploration and choice as bonus work. So they can kind of add their own artist flavor to their next one. Maybe if you don't want to give them so much clay, you can give them a lesser amount, for example or they can do a mini version of a sculpture or artwork or watercolor painting. But now you're giving them more student exploration and choice. And this would be the part of their bonus work. Another idea. So for older students, and if you are fortunate to work in a school that gives you technology, then you can let them explore art videos and experiment with YouTube. I highly suggest that you give them a predetermined list of channels or a playlist that they may watch. This can allow them to continue working on their skills and even see professional artists creating. There are so many amazing art tutorials created by professional artists on YouTube now. You can find anything from sketchbook showings or visual journal demonstrations. You can find how to create illusionist drawings or surrealist paintings. Museums now put on videos that explore artists or art shows. The world is changing and for me, this is a huge positive. There are dark parts in the web, but this is a little candlelight that I do cherish and I love watching them myself. I can be in anyone's studio watching with an invitation from the artist. Just imagine if Andy Warhol were alive with this. Okay, next idea. Create a Zen corner or calming corner, a mindful art space, a small corner with a rug or comfy chairs or cushions. Put in some clipboards or boards to draw on and some mediums that don't cause chaos to carpet and let them explore in a Zen way. You can even put on a cheap or old radio with a CD of some meditation music or rain sounds. Let them turn it on just nice and low and explore drawing on their backs or bellies in comfort. No more than 
five to the carpet or zen area because it will quickly lose that zen vibe. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty firm, sorry, on the zen environment there, and I reinforce the fact that it needs to be silent, calm, and working. If I do not see that, I kindly remind them of the expectations, and the next time I come, and that the next time I come to the carpet, it will be to ask them to return to their seats. And you need to tell them, I mean what I say. And then follow through with that. After a while, maybe after a couple months, the kids have made that expectation of a positive working, as a positive working habit in that area. Now, if you don't have a carpet or have no space for one, no worry. You can have a corner or a space with some different seating like a bench or old rocking chair or stools or bean bags. Be creative. Or you could have a designated Zen table and you uh, deck it out to be different than the rest of the tables. Maybe with some paint or plants or lighting, whatever. You got this. This can be how you integrate in social emotional learning in your art classroom. It can also help students who struggle with self-regulation to ease into your classroom as well. Five minute timer at the start of the class for students who have no self-regulation or are still working on it, or maybe they have high anxiety. This can really help and reduce the time on that timer as the year progresses. So eventually you're working towards not needing to do that. Very soft start at all. So last is art choice boards. These are another lovely option. You can create some art themed choice boards to put at your tables. Photocopy them onto bright paper and laminate them and then you can keep them in your when you're done area or bin or keep one at each table. They can be kind of like a menu of what you want to do after you're done. Okay, so these grid style boards can have nine when you're done act art activities on them to choose from and the kids can pick when to do when they're done their assignments. So you just have to put a few words on each grid, type them in and they can pick. Well, my friends, that is the end of this episode. Here is your action item before I leave you. Pick one of these things to try in your classroom and see if it makes a difference and freeze you up from explaining what to do when you're done. Remember to be clear about your expectations and reinforce them. Routines don't happen overnight, so be patient as your students learn it as well. Now, if you try one of these and take a picture of it, post it to Instagram or, or Twitter and take me at Ms. Artastic and you will be entered into my monthly contest where I offer um, my resources or ideas in action. Uh, and you have the chance to win a $10 valued resource or, um, from my TPT store. Your choice. So, after this episode, please check out the Artastic Collective, which can be found by searching Artastic Collective on a search engine or find it at artasticcollective.com. Remember, this, ep this membership will close soon. And now is a good time to explore if it's the option that for you that will eliminate all that planning time. I'm here for you and I'm ready to help you in your art teaching journey. Join me in my next episode where I will talk about inspiring reluctant art makers. I'm Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing off. <laughs>